So today I want to go through a typical mistake that particularly IGCSE students make that can really gain you an extra couple of marks, particularly in that paper two on either the IGCSE 0580 or 0607 course. And that is leaving blank. So leaving just a blank space, for a, even a single question. And this is something that many teachers say, um, I know it's something maybe it's already been pointed out to you, uh, but I wanna answer the follow-up question to this that many students have, what do I write instead? And that's a really, really good question. And you can use a lot of common sense to actually work out what should go in the gap. So I'm gonna go through three examples today where you can write in a number that makes kind of sense and you may pick up that extra two, three, four marks that could make an extra eight, nine percent to your exams. So the first question I want to go through is a circle theorem question. And you can see the question here. And we've got an angle of 40 degrees. We have an angle of 77 degrees. And you can actually work out the angle on the straight line, which would be 63 degrees. Using angles on a straight line make 180 degrees. And it's very, very likely that the angle that you need to find is actually going to be one of those numbers. It's going to be either 40, 77, or 63 in some way. So just by trying and writing down one of those numbers, you do have a chance of picking up the marks there. So try and use the information in the question to actually help you put down a number that kind of makes sense. Okay, and my second question is question 17 here, which is an exponential equation question. And the first thing that we need to consider here is that x is probably going to be a whole number. And it's probably going to be a quite a small whole number as well in order to be on a non-calculated paper. So that x is probably going to lend itself between minus 4 and plus 4 in some way. Otherwise, numbers simply get too big to calculate. So by putting down even one of those numbers or trying out a couple of those numbers, you've got a very good chance of picking up again another two, maybe even three marks on this kind of question. And if you're liking the video thus far, then do consider giving myself a like or a subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. And my very last question here is a graph sketching question. So y equals one over x. And one thing we can do here is to try and actually work out what this function even looks like. So say you've completely forgotten what a reciprocal function looks like. Well, let's try some numbers. So when x is equal to one, for example, then y is equal to one over one, which is one. So you can roughly plot the coordinate actually on the graph. When x is equal to two, for example, then y is equal to a half. So you can plot that coordinate. And hopefully by putting a couple of coordinates in with really straightforward numbers, you can hopefully get that trigger moment when you go, ah, it's that kind of graph. So that's another technique that hopefully is really, really useful to you to actually try and work out what the answer is. So hopefully that's helped you in terms of looking at the gaps that you may have left on your particular paper and try and eke out those three, four, five marks, which can make the difference between a grade B and a grade C. And I'd really recommend you check out the video just here because I go through some walkthroughs. So hopefully you don't have to use this idea too often.